Okay, now that um, you're done with your ESC soldering and heat shrinking, things should be looking good. You know, nice heat shrink tubings on each of the bullet connectors and uh, heat shrinking over the ESC and a nice connection. Now you can go ahead and put that away and uh, just quickly I like to mention that I did find a new camera angle. Uh, I know it's been a little problem since working with camera to the side is kind of difficult. So hopefully in front, uh, by putting the camera in front, it'll make your life easier as viewers and my life easier so my hands don't get in your way. Now what we're going to do next is build the yaw mechanism as per RC Explorer's design. Um, so what you're going to need is one of these I mentioned in the beginning. These are landing gears and uh, they're down in the product or in the description below. I believe you can get these on Hobby King for like two dollars and fifty cents or something like that. But anyway, back to what I was saying. You want to take your DT750 motor mount, if that's what you're using. I don't know what else you could be using, but um, this is what I'm using. And it's proven, it's not the best motor, but it works. So take your DT750 mount, lay it right on top of the motor mount. Take two zip ties and zip them through the bottom hole. So as you can see right here, this is four different holes, right? And you have these big holes, these two big holes right here on the, DT, on the uh, motor mount, and these two small holes. You want to line the small holes up with one of the corner holes, or two of the corner holes here. So line two small holes on the motor mount up with uh, the two corner holes, like so. Get a good shot. So, you guys won't be confused. Now, what you're going to do is put your zip tie through. You don't have to tie them down, just put them through and make sure that everything else fits. It'll, be, it'll look like this. It'll look slightly slanted towards uh, the left side or the right side, depending on where you put it. But what you're going to do is uh, hold it down now and just go ahead and mark the third hole which is going to be resting on the white part of the uh, motor mount. Um, pen doesn't really work well so you probably want to swap that out for a sharpie or something of that sort. Now I made my dot, it doesn't have to be anything fancy just a dot would do because uh, what you're going to be doing is using a drill to drill this out. Now that you have the dot get go and get your drill ready and we'll drill a hole. Now you could use um, eighth inch bits but I'm going to go and look up the smallest hole or the smallest drill hole needed to have your zip tie go through. Um, you could technically do it yourself because you might be using different zip ties than I am. I like these small zip ties that I get from China. They're really long for their thickness and width. So, I mean, I recommend them. I'll try to find the link if I can. And you guys could purchase them on eBay as well. Okay, so after some um, drill fitting and uh, bit finding, I found that three over 32 inches um, work well for what we're trying to do. So if you have that size, go ahead, feel free to up the size. I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. Um, so now, take your drill and put your bit in. And it's best if you try to get this uh, perpendicular. It's not really that big of a deal if you don't. Um, so yeah, what you're gonna do is just... Spin up that drill and drill in. 
Now what you're going to have is a nice third hole as seen here and your motor mount should fit perfectly maybe not perfectly but it should be able to mount onto the yaw mechanism. Now the second part of the yaw mechanism build will be putting these two pieces together so this is just another the second half of the landing gear that I had in the bag um, there's no difference there's pretty much the same thing so uh, what you're gonna do is take your carbon rod which is also going to be down in the product or in the description below sorry I didn't mention that you need a carbon tube or not tube carbon solid carbon rod in the beginning of the video but I feel like you guys know this already because you probably came here um, having some idea of the RC Explorer build. Um, I got my carbon rod from rcfoams.com. I don't know if there are any better sources available, but um, in my opinion, their shipping is not the best because uh, I, don't, I don't feel like their rates are very reasonable for being based in the US, but hey. Um, the whole rod probably costed me about like 10, 15 dollars or something, I can't remember, but um, since I found them a long time ago. Okay, so you're gonna um, switch out your drill bit to something that's four, a little more than four millimeter, and um, five 30 second bits work pretty well for this, so um, five over 32 inches, uh, that translates to about four inches, or I'm, I'm sorry, four millimeters in metric. And what you're gonna do is, you're not gonna touch um, the piece of landing gear that you just drilled. You want to take the new one, and then just, you'll see this hole right here. Just kind of guide it through. It'll go very easily, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, what I do is, while I have this, Spinning, I pulled this part outwards, so um, you gotta watch out when you're doing this because uh, if you're using a high torque drill, it's not gonna it's gonna want to yank you back. So what this pretty much does is it, it widens the hole a little bit, so um, you know it widens the hole so that the carbon rod goes through better. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this to the other side as well. Okay. Now let's just test how things fit. Okay, so the, so the carbon rod kind of just goes around pretty, not too snugly, but snug enough for our applications. And uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the one, the uh, piece that we already made over the one that we just drilled. So the one of your mount, the one, the piece that you're mounting on, uh, you want to keep this on top of the one that's going out to be touching your booms. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do is actually just push this rod in. So it does take some strength you gotta hopefully you can see this so it's a little tricky getting them lined up but once you do it also um, looking through this hole helps just to see uh, how your rod is tracking uh, go ahead and do that. Okay, now that I've got my carbon rod through the landing gear pieces, I want to cut uh, the rest of the carbon fiber rod off. So what you're going to need for this step is your Dremel, or you could actually just use a utility knife, but it's a very slow and painful process. Ask me how I know. And uh, don't forget, if you're using this a Dremel to cut this, you might want to wear a respirator because the um, particles are going to be everywhere and you don't want to be breathing that stuff in.
Oh yes, I did forget to mention that you're probably going to want to have something under your work surface because as you can see, things get uh, carbonized very quickly. So here is your finished product. Um, make sure for the part that you're going to be mounting your motor to, make sure that this part is completely flat because we're going to be gluing a servo horn on here for the um, drive from the servo to uh, your yaw mechanism. And if you want, you can go ahead and sand the other part flat as well, just, you know, for aesthetics.